In episode 3, we ended the episode by buying the Kasatka submarine. In today's episode, we'll be completing our first Cayo Perico heist, and I'll be guiding you through it step by step from scope out all the way to completion, while also keeping in mind that at this point, you probably won't have a helicopter yet. So we'll fix that issue in episode 5, but today, we'll be starting off this episode by actually going and getting a helicopter that's just going to spawn on the map. In the Cayo Perico heist, after every single setup mission, you're going to have to go back to your Kasatka submarine, which is going to be in the water. So instead of requesting a dinghy boat all the time, which we will do sometimes, but I also want you to be aware of all of the helicopter spawns on the map. So I'm going to put them all on your screen now. So keep these locations in mind whenever you're doing these setups. With that out of the way, we're going to go over to our Kasatka, watch the starting cutscene, and I'll talk to you guys on Cayo Perico. Once you finish all these cutscenes, we uh, we just need to get past this guard here. Now, if you walk right past me, he's going to tell you to turn around. So we kind of need to sneak around him or we can wait for him to actually walk forward, which happens every so often. And then we can just walk behind him and walk out the gate. Okay, now that we're out, just, uh, just follow this route that I'm going to show you here. So we're going to come up here to the right. Now we're going to have this first guard tower up there. We're going to run all the way and go through this little door. All right, we're through. So we're going to go to the right here because there's a camera watching that way. And what we can do, check that there's no car coming and there's no car you can see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal this ATV, back it up and drive right across here, dodging that camera. Now make sure that the guard in the guard tower on the right isn't looking this way as well, which he isn't right now. So we're going to gun it across here. All right, we're good. First thing we need to do is get to the compound of El Rubio. After your first completion, you'll just need to get to the uh, communications tower up there, but we have to get to the actual compound and scope it out on our first time. So just follow this route that I'm doing here. This is one of the most easiest ways. You can really do whatever you want, but if you want to not get detected, I'm not gonna get detected on this run, so just copy what I do. All right, so I like to head up to basically where the communications tower is and then slowly go down to the compound. Make sure that guard doesn't see us because he's about to turn around. Drive slowly, try not to run into any bushes or anything. Like, okay, well, I've just done that. This ATV is really not handling the ground as well as I thought it would, but that's okay. All right, there's a compound entrance. How far down do we need to get? Right here, okay. So there's the compound. Now we're going to turn around and go back up to that communications tower. Just take the same route, dodging that guard that's in the tower there. We should turn around at some point here. Hey, buddy, come on. We've got things to do. And, dude, these trees. These trees do my head in. Come on. Up we go. Come on. That's the way, lad. Oh, see, that's why you should probably drive a bit slower. All right, once we're here, we'll go in this gate, and we're looking for the communications signal box thing. Sometimes it can spawn on the ground, but it hasn't this time, so we'll climb up. And it can spawn on any of the levels of this tower. Could be on the first level, could be on the top level. So just keep an eye out. You'll hear it as well. And it's right here on the first level. Easy. All right, we'll open this. And then we just need to do a little bit of algebra. So I hope you didn't skip your math class today, because... All right, so that's times 1, times 2, and times 5. So we need a times... Times 10, sorry. Times 10, times 1, and then times 2 gets us 59. Easy. Okay, once we're here, we're going to go into Sightseer on our phone. I'm not going to try and spoil this for you, but you do get like a mini cutscene, so we'll skip past this. Okay, once you finish that cutscene, what I actually want you to do is go through all of the cameras and scroll all the way from right to left or left to right. Here we are in the basement, though. We need to go all the way to the left because the first time we do this heist, we're going to get the Madrazo files. There they are. All right, we scoped out the primary target. Now, what I would recommend doing is just going left to right, like I said, through all of these cameras. You're going to see a lot of secondary loot that we won't actually be able to get as a solo player because you need two key cards to enter these rooms, so you need at least two players. That's fine, this heist is actually more profitable as a solo player anyway, so don't worry about it. And the reason I want you to do this is not actually to scope out these secondary targets, but once you get outside, it's going to scope different entry points into the compound for you. So as you can see here with the north gate, we scroll all the way to the left and we just scope out an entry point there. We'll go north wall. Go all the way to the right. 
and there's another compound entry point. So basically just do that. You'll only have to do this once and then you will remember all of these points. After that, Pavel's gonna tell you to go to the North Dock, which is kind of annoying because we won't actually be using the North Dock for the way that we're gonna do the Kayabriga heist today. But anyway, just go there, do what he tells you to do. And then what I want you to do after that is actually steal one of these dinghies here. Once you've got the dinghy, I want you to drive it all the way around here, where I'm placing this waypoint, right out front of the compound in the water here. This is because we're going to scope out the drainage tunnel. Now, you don't actually scope this out by taking a photo of it. You do it by swimming underwater where the drainage tunnel is. So follow what I do here and you'll scope it out. Then I want you to drive all the way around to the main dock over here. Take a photo of this entrance, make sure that it pops up as you scoping out the main dock. This is actually where we're going to enter for the Kaya Perico heist. So you need to take a photo of it in order to actually enter here. Next, I want you to head back to the airstrip back at the top of the map. Go into this building here, this hangar sort of thing. I guess it's a hangar, right? And once we're in here, we want to take a photo of all of this secondary loot. So we've got some green stuff there and some cash. So we'll take a photo of that. You do have to take a photo of each individual item as well. It won't just take a photo of both of them. Send both of those to Pavel. Then we're going to jump up on this box, jump up here. This is where we can scope out some more stuff. So we got a bit more cash and coke. So that's the best. Coke is going to pay the most. Beautiful. So in terms of how much they're going to pay you for loot that you can get solo, coke is going to be the best. Then it's going to be the green stuff. And then cash pays the least. I've done a complete breakdown where I broke down the profits for every single one as well, including gold and artwork. So check that out. That's a video for a separate occasion. This is just our first time through. After you've scoped those two out, we're going to run over here. That's because more secondary loot can spawn in this shack here. We didn't get any. That's okay. We've still got coke, some green stuff, and some cash we can grab over there. Once that's done, you're going to have to take a photo of the control tower as well. So do that, then head back to the pilot and head back to the city. Next, I'll be showing you which setups you should do, and I'll give you a couple little tips for each one. So let's start with the approach vehicle. We're going to be doing the long fin. As you can see here, I've got a helicopter on the front of my submarine. That's because I stole it from the airport. You can try and make these helicopters last as long as possible by, like I did here, landing it on the submarine. For the long fin setup, we have to go to a police station and then Pavel is going to tell us to go get a truck that can tow the boat to where we need to get it to. These trucks are going to be on your map. Now, there's going to be one location where there's two trucks and another location where there's one truck. At the location where only one truck spawns, that's going to be heavily guarded by lots of enemies. That's because it's actually a phantom wedge. It's got like a massive ramp on the front of it. For this setup, though, we don't actually really need to use that. I would recommend just going the safer option and stealing one of the two trucks that spawn close to each other. Once that's done, go to the police station, back this truck in there, take the long fin, and once you have the long fin out of the police station, what I actually want you to do is hop out of your truck and blow yourself up. The reason for that is this is the quickest way to lose the cops. So that'll save you time trying to drive this massive slow truck towing a boat and trying to lose the cops that way. Just blow yourself up and then hop right back in and drive to the destination. Now, as you can see here, once I finished this, I had no helicopters anywhere near me. So what I did was I requested my Kasatka again. That way it's going to spawn very close to me. Then I go back into my services menu and request a dinghy. That's going to spawn a dinghy right next to me. That way I don't need to try and steal a helicopter or a boat. I can just spawn the dinghy right next to me in the water and drive over there. Next setup we're going to do is safe codes. Now this one's pretty straightforward again. We just need to go into the casino, take out this guy and steal the codes. Once you're in here, a lot of enemies are going to spawn like you can see here. But the guy you're looking for is going to be wearing a cowboy hat with a suit. And oh boy, yep, he's got a shotgun. Forgot about that. Going to have to be a bit more careful. All right, now that he's down, we'll take his safe codes and get the hell out of here. Do the same thing again. Either steal a helicopter or request a dinghy and go back to the submarine. Next setup is fingerprint cloner. This one, again, pretty simple. You're just going to have to go to this warehouse. There's going to be four guys inside of here. It shouldn't be too hard to take out. Just take cover and take them out slowly if you need to. 
gonna hack this computer then we need to go over to the archive which is actually gonna be completely unguarded so we go in here steal the fingerprint cloner and head back to the submarine again next setup we're gonna do is cutting torch we're not gonna do demolition charges because they're very loud whereas the cutting torch is completely silent if you don't have the option to do the cutting torch it's because you didn't scope out the drainage channel by the way so make sure you go scope out the drainage channel like we did earlier in the video and then you can do this setup instead of the demolition charges this one's pretty easy it's just going to take us to a construction site there's a couple ways we can do it we can either go in guns blazing and kill all of these guys or we can look for a construction hat that's going to be around here somewhere once you put on this hard hat the enemies aren't going to actually care that you're there they're going to think you're just an employee working at the construction site so you can go around look at all of the toolboxes until you find the one with the drill in it this is the one here pick it up and then take it back to the submarine next we're going to choose a weapon loadout i normally recommend going aggressor because the assault shotgun is amazing this one's technically personal preference whatever you like most go with that but i would recommend aggressor now here we've got a really good setup it's one where we have to go to one of the buildings in the city that's the best option if you don't get this setup and it tells you to go to merryweather hq what i would actually recommend doing is setting your spawn location to your kasatka and just finding a new lobby the reason for that is this setup we're doing here should really only take you a couple minutes whereas the merryweather hq one is gonna make you follow a really slow helicopter all the way across the map and that setup can take like 10 minutes it's a massive waste of time Instead, just keep refreshing it by finding a new lobby and starting the setup again until it tells you to go to a building that's in the city. Once we're here, preferably you would do this stealthy, but we had to kill the guys out front of the building so everyone knows we're here. Just take it slow, it's, it's fine, you've got unlimited lives, just take out all the guys in here, hack the computer and steal the weapons from the safe deliver the weapons back to the submarine and then we're ready to actually do the finale we're almost done i would not recommend doing any of the disruption preps they take a while to actually complete and we won't actually need them if we do this stealthy don't worry i'll show you how to do this completely perfectly stealthily so you're never going to alert any guards okay let's start up this finale I'll pause it here so you can see everything that we'll be doing. Approach vehicle is going to be long fin, infiltration point is main dock, compound entry, drainage tunnel, escape point does not matter at all, I just put it on airstrip. It doesn't actually matter where you escape, you can escape anywhere you like. Time of day, I put it as day just because that's probably easiest to see everything clearly. And then weapon loadout, we chose aggressor and make sure you choose the option to put a suppressor on it as well, like you can see here. Once that's done, we're good to go, so let's go. For this heist, I'm going to do absolutely no jump cuts. I'm going to just walk you through everything we're going to be doing. That way, it should be very, very easy for you to understand. So I'm just going to let this heist play out and explain my decisions along the way. First thing we're going to do is we're going to head left because we started at the main dock. We're going to go to the airstrip first and collect all of the secondary loot. Now, we can't just take as much loot as we like. We do have a loot bag that has a limit. And I'll explain that once we're inside. But first, we'll park the long fin here because we're going to come back to it. So we want to just put it right up against the shore there. Then first thing we're going to do is head to that back hangar here. And we're going to grab all of the loot. So what we're going to do, we've got suppressors on. We're going to take out this guy. Easy done. Now, we want to make sure we take him out as far left as possible because there is going to be a truck that comes through over near that entrance there and it will spot that body if you kill him too close to where that truck is. Alright, we're inside. First thing we're going to do is grab the coke. That's going to fill up half of our bag. Grab this forklift. Going to grab this crate. And then we're going to put it right over here so we can jump on top of it. Make sure you don't block the door at the bottom here to this secondary loot because we're going to need that door as well. We're going to jump up here. Oh, okay, we're going to jump down. I, I did not even know you could slide through there. That is wild. All right, we're going to jump up here. Jump on top of the crate. Over we go. Alright, this is why we chose the cutting torch, because it's completely silent. As you can see there. Alright, we're in. Easy. So we're going to grab the coke first. Let's fill our bag. Oh, 
beautiful. And then the green stuff is going to give us the second most amount of money. So we'll take that next. Jump over here. Jump back down. In we go. Oh, we got to cut it. That's right. Okay, grab the green on the left here. Fill this bad boy up. Now, the green stuff is going to take up one third of the bag space. So we've got a little bit left over, so we'll fill that up with cash. Normally one full stack of cash will take up a quarter of the bag, or 25%. So we won't have room for all of this, but we'll just take what we can to fill our bag up. There we go. So we're at $416,000. And we're not even at the main objective yet. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to run out here, head back to the long fin. We'll steal this car, make it a bit quicker. Make sure we don't alert any guards though. Awesome. Alright, then we're going to come all the way around here and go right out front where that drainage tunnel is. Alright, we've got a bit of a drive ahead of us. Just enjoy the uh, the boat long fin ASMR sound. Jump out. Alright, we're going to want to dive down. Make sure you put your rebreather on. I believe that's going to be G on PC, and it should be left on the D-pad for console. Come down here, and we're going to cut this gate open. Or the grate, I should say. So here we go. Normally, you have to go back and forth three or four times on every single one. There we go, we're in. All right, let's kick this bad boy down and get in the compound. Open the door, we're in. Okay, now as I said, we're gonna do this completely undetected. If you do get detected, you can just restart it off spawn. We're gonna take this guy out. All right, follow this path. So we're gonna run all the way across here, avoiding these guards' cone of sight. I'm gonna jump up here. Run across to these stairs. Wait for this guard on our left to turn around, which he did. Now we also need to wait for him to go all the way back in there, like like right there until he stops, and then we can take him out. That's important because a juggernaut will walk through that area and spot him if we don't. We can take this guy out as well. Now that last guard also gave us gate keys, so I'll show you what they do as well if you are lucky enough to get them. And then for this last guy on the stairs, we do the exact same thing. That was a bit too close. Probably just should have shot him, but that's, that's all right, we did it. Once you're in this room here, go over to the safe at the back. There's a bit of extra cash in here. Okay, we got about 60,000, that's nice. And then you can go in that door that I just aimed at, but since we have the gate key that we picked up off one of the guards just before, we're actually gonna make sure that the way is clear down here, jump off. Oh, that was actually way too close, that guard almost saw us. And because we have this gate key, we can actually jump down here open this gate and come in this way. That way, instead of hacking three fingerprints, we're only gonna have to hack one. Makes it a lot easier. Now, an easy rule of thumb, pun intended, for this one is obviously we know what the first fingerprint is gonna look like. And then what we do is we go to the first fingerprint again on the second level, and then just go one more to the right. That way it's gonna be the second fingerprint. On the third one, we're gonna go down to the second fingerprint that was, we just basically copy the one above us and then go one more to the right, if that makes sense. That's the easiest way to do it. I don't really know a better way to explain it than that. But just keep doing that until you get to the bottom of the fingerprint and then you would have done it. Okay, we're in. Now that we're inside, all of this again is completely stealthy because we have the, uh, the actual drill instead of the demolition. 
open this, El Rubia is going to text us the code 450429. 45029. We're in. Okay, once we're out, we want to jump back over here. Make sure the juggernaut isn't there to look at us. And then we want to run. Run, 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 run. We can run right around that guard's cone of vision and get to this door. Now, that guard that's coming towards us, if you don't do that in time, just, just wait for him to walk past you and then he'll turn around again. Just wait until the way is clear and take the exact path that I did. If you have to wait for that guard to go back and forth, that's completely fine. Just be patient. Make sure it works. Don't get spotted. Once we're here... What we have to do is take out this guard by the bike here. Now there is going to be a guard in a car that's going to come through and spot that guy. So we also need to take out this guy that's going to be coming in the car. Just to be safe though, we'll take out this guard as well. And then this guard in the car is going to be coming through any second. There he is on our map. So we're going to jump up here on the left and sort of jump out and shotgun him in the face before he knows what's going on. Uh, All righty. Jump out in front of him. Blast him. Boom, he's dead. All right. And then basically we're done. So we're going to steal his car or you can just use that bike. Drive up here. Then we want to drive right to the end of this sort of peninsula here. Beautiful drive off into the water, jump out, and then we just want to swim as far away from the island as we possibly can. Put your rebreather on again and just keep swimming. Alrighty, once we get far enough away, way out here, yep, there we go, it says Escape Kaiparigo, that's disappeared from the bottom of the screen, so we're done. Now we're just going to wait for the cutscene to pop up, and we're good to go. Any second, come on, come on Rockstar, hit me with it. There we go. Alrighty, again, I'm not going to try and spoil anything, so we'll skip to the end of this cutscene. And here we go, the end screen for the heist. Actual take 1.55 million, which is, you know, that's, that's really good for about two hours work. Or less than two hours. Anyway, under 15 minutes, 10 minutes 50. Nice, no hacks failed. And full loot bags, which means we did the elite challenge. So we're going to get an extra 50 grand. And there we go, that's our final total. 1.6 million. That's a lot of money for just under two hours work as a really low level player. We're only level 31 right now on this character. So there you have it. The final cutscene is going to play. That is Rags to Riches episode four done. In episode five, we'll be doing the Kaya Perico heist again. It's going to be a completely unedited episode showing you how to completely optimize your run from start to finish. I'm really excited for this one because it's not often I upload a completely unedited video. So stay tuned for that. That's coming next week. I hope you're all staying safe and I will see you in the next video. Peace.